Let's begin the news by telling you that the federal government has inaugurated a 10-member interministerial committee to enforce the Supreme Court's recent ruling on local government autonomy. According to a statement by Shegun Imohi Sen, Director of Information and Public Relations at the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, the committee will be led by Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume. Key members include the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, the Minister of Budget and Economic Planning and the Accountant General of the Federation. The committee's primary objective is to ensure that local governments nationwide fully realize their newly granted autonomy. Joining me now to discuss this is an economist and public affairs analyst, Aliyu Ilias. Thank you so much, Aliyu, for joining us. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Good afternoon, sir. Now, Aliyu, speaking of this development, given the historic challenges uh, in implementing local government autonomy in Nigeria, what specific strategies can the committee employ to ensure that there is effective implementation of the Supreme Court's ruling? Right. Uh, thank you uh, so much. Uh, first and foremost, I think uh, we must commend the president, uh, President Bolamere Tinubu, for having the political will and the administrative uh, uh, power to actually make sure that the local governments uh, have autonomy. I think uh, it's a good one because you recall that President Muhammad Buhari has actually given uh, executive order and does not even have any uh, uh, implementation or what have you in the life of local government and state. But the way uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu have taken it, I think it's a good one because now, if you look at that committee headed by the Secretary of the Federal, uh, Federal Government, you notice that all the financial uh, office, uh, office, like uh, Akatan General, uh, Federal Minister of, uh, um, of Finance, you know, you look at all budget and planning, they factor them into it. And that simply means when they are sending those money, they will make sure that they send it uh, directly to the uh, appropriate uh, local government. In addition to that, you also see that they have put the date of implementation of it, and they have also said that if you don't have substantive uh, chairman, you will not get this allocation. I think it's a good one for Nigeria because if you look at, we have 774 local governments, and we are not seeing any uh, developments uh, uh, whatsoever in that level. Perhaps you see that federal government share federal allocation, they have 52%. The state have 26 percent why do local government have 20 percent but you see that joint account of local government and state will also still receive the two state and local government account and that is affecting delivery at the crash crash too. so it's good for the local government to have administrative power not only uh giving them only political uh power i think it's a good one in the right direction now with all this said what um are the potential obstacles that they may face and how can they address these obstacles well, the first obstacle there is that they may have problem with their governors because after having received the money, the governor may still call them to come and account and come and tell them how they are going to spend the, the money. That's the first obstacle. The second obstacle is the issue of corruption. You agree with me that in Nigeria today, once people are disposed with money, it begins to really uh, affect them negative that they will now start having issues of uh, appropriation. So I think the next thing that we should look at is the local government election. The first thing is local government election. Let INE or federal government have a say in that so that we can really have not only administrative independence, we can have political independence for local government. Then the second one is the issue of uh, corruption. You know, where once people are disposed with corrupt money, it becomes uh, you know, a, a tool in their hand to behave the way they like. So I think federal government should also have a structure that will make sure they have accountability of the money they are collecting. Okay, um, what mechanisms can be put in place to prevent corruption? You talked about accountability. So how can we ensure accountability in the use of these funds and prevent corruption? Yeah, the first thing to do is to ensure transparency. You know, transparency is very, very key. How do we talk about transparency? Is it three, is it three uh, phase things? Federal government must be transparent while giving out the money. You know, I recall during Okonjo, uh, and and Olusha Gombasanjo, they used to have a kind of a publication that will share, that will identify how much the government collects. That's number one. Number two, state also should stand as supervisor. It does not mean they don't have a seat. They can also supervise and look at what is happening. Then thirdly, is that we Nigerians must hold this local government chairman accountable. 
we must find a way once we see that the allocation has been given and it has been published in the newspaper we just have to follow the money they are collecting if this is for primary uh, school we should make sure that they actually carry it and if they don't carry it we should question them and that's why the role of citizen is very very key citizen must make sure that they follow this and that's how our local government can be better you agree with me that every person in Nigeria belongs to is in a particular local government so we must make sure we follow the money and make sure that anything they say they want to do with the money they actually deal with the money all right, uh, I guess my final question to you is going to be how can the committee involve the public in the implementation process and how can they ensure that local governments are accountable to their constituents? Well, basically, you know, it's, uh, it's quite budgetary in nature. When you want to do any, any uh, carry out any expenses, must have been your budget. So what we need to do is that once they are presenting their budget, once they are, you know, having a yearly plan, once they are having monthly uh, plan or whatever, we should make sure that they're actually doing the right thing. Because by the time you start veering the money to another project, it becomes a problem. So like I said earlier, I think Nigeria and NGOs should start their work now to make sure they follow local government uh, allocation very, very well. And also the states, it's the, to the glory of states if local government is performing well, because they will have less work uh, to do. Then federal government must be transparent. Like I mentioned earlier, in giving out that money, they should make sure that they let the stakeholder be aware of the money they are giving. So it's a good one in the right direction. We are commend the federal government for this uh, initiative. And if you look at the committee itself, committee itself has actually shown transparency. You have Ministry of Finance, you have representative of the state, you have representative of the local government, you have secretary to the federal government, you have Akatan General. If you look at all these people, they are, they are going to be like a watchdog in the long run to make sure that those money they collect is actually expended to the right uh, project. All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, um, economist and public affairs analyst Eliu Elias. Thank you for giving us your opinion. And of course, we're going to look to see how this is implemented. Hopefully it is.